I'm aware that many of you have expressed a desire for online counseling, and to that effect, we have a sponsor who will help you and assist you in that respect. So if you will, go beneath the video, you'll find a link to our online counseling sponsor. They, they have a whole team of counselors that can help you. Uh, practice self-care, get the help that you need. A very difficult byproduct of being in some form of a relationship with a narcissist is that they're constantly looking for ways to establish themselves as better than you. Uh, they have no problem whatsoever in giving one-up kind of comments or turning the relationship into a competition and they're always the better one in the competition. Uh, they can be very condescending and they can be very haughty and entitled, those kind of things. They must be in control. But then they can take it, the narcissist can take it to an entirely different level once you have really gotten in on their bad side. Because at that point, they not only are going to have this superiority attitude, but they make it their job to try to turn other individuals against you. And today I want to highlight seven of the most common techniques that these people can use as they try to make you look foolish to other individuals. And I want you to be aware of this so that at least you can have an understanding and knowledge of what's going on. And then we might uh, see if we can uh, figure out how you can respond uh, to this. One of the first of these seven ways that the narcissist can turn other people against you is they can just point blank tell overt lies about you. For example, I, I remember one woman who was uh, very conscientious and very steady and all, and she was about to go through a divorce. And uh, one of the comments that she heard that was being spoken uh, about her by the narcissist was, she's never where she's supposed to be. You, know, you never know what she's up to. And her comment would be like, I'm, I'm highly predictable and nobody's ever said that about me before. Or uh, that person can say something like, oh, out in public, you may think that that person is so nice, but the narcissist will say, that individual is full of rage and, uh, and, and you never know when they're going to go off. Now, the person that's being spoken about may say to me later on, yeah, I remember once when the narcissist was going off at me, I, I yelled, stop it. And that's what he's referring to when he says, I'm full of rage. And so the, the narcissist, they like to just tell point blank lies because who's going to refute them if it's uh, at, uh, regarding situations that nobody else sees? That's one of their techniques. Now, another strong technique that narcissists will use to demean you to other individuals is they'll actually project their own personal flaws onto you. I'll give you an example. There's this one fellow who was talking with me about uh, how he uh, he was he had a, a wife who was just very difficult with finances. Later on, I learned that she um, had told her friends, well, I had to take over the fi family finances because we wound up getting about $150,000 in debt to the IRS. And then on top of that, we had bill collectors coming at us. And so, yeah, I wound up just saying, let me handle all of this. And, and I didn't want him to have any kind of say so in that. Oh, that's a little bit different. So here he was, he was this grossly irresponsible person with money saying how grossly irresponsible she is with money and they'll project their own junk into you. Or there's another situation where a fellow was talking about uh, uh, his coworkers and specifically this narcissistic guy was saying, oh, there, there's this one guy and he has to take charge of every meeting we have at our place of work. Well, actually, the narcissist is the one that had the reputation of being bossy and overbearing and domineering. He can't get a word in edgewise, and yet he's smearing someone else by saying they have to be in charge, seeing in you what they cannot come to terms with on the inside of themselves. Classic projection. Now, there's a third technique that they use as they try to smear you. And that is they can actually twist certain words or uh, uh, elements about you into what we would call half-truths. Another illustration there. A woman is telling, had told me that she had spoken about a man that she knew in their social uh, circle. And her comment was, I just really love the way 
that he treats his elderly parents. Apparently they had some uh, difficulty in this particular man that she knew. Uh, she admired the way that he handled that. Later on, her husband said, oh, she point blank said that she loves this guy. Well, I love the way that he treats his parents. Turns out to, she says she's in love. That's the half truth element that might be there. Or uh, let's suppose that uh, you have somebody that uh, is a narcissistic person and, and uh, th they've been haranguing you. So you just withdraw and remove yourself. Then later on, the narcissist will say, on top of everything else, that person is the master at passive aggressiveness. Well, you withdrew. Passive aggressive people do that, but that's the narcissist way of ta uh, taking something and uh, making a half truth out of it. That's the way they can operate. Or a fourth, and this is one that uh, that will drive people crazy because um, it just sets you up in such a bad light, but it's what I refer to as coy, I can't say insinuations. So let's suppose that you're talking with that narcissistic person and you're saying, so what's going on in your relationship with, uh, with your brother or with your wife or, or husband? And then the narcissist kind of says, I don't think I need to get into it. Or it may be that uh, there's been some sort of a, a breakup between you and that narcissist. And the narcissist uh, might say something like, well, I, I, yeah, I, I know that some people think that she's a real truth teller, but I, 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 no, I don't need to get into it. And so when you say, well, come on, tell me, what, what are you getting at? No, I, I think some things are just better off left unsaid. And they can use that. That's what I mean when I say there's a coy, I can't say insinuation. And so they're not overtly telling lies, but they're leading you towards the presumption that a lie is indeed truth. That's how they can operate. And that's the, that's the covert, passive aggressive uh, narcissism in the extreme. Another, uh, a fifth way that they can uh, turn other people about you is they can describe things about you out of context. For example, uh, there was a, a man who had difficulties uh, with his brother. And so he was known to say, my brother is nothing but a drunk and a pothead. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, you don't know what's going on with him. Well, then later on, you talk to the brother who's being smeared and you find out, well, 25 years ago in college, this guy had a rebellious streak and, and tried uh, marijuana and tried uh, an overuse of alcohol but then he'll say, that was 25 years ago. I got that out of my system a long time ago, only to find out that this narcissist is still holding on to that, uh, describing mistakes outside of the context. Uh, and and uh, they can make it sound so sincere and other people can think, wow, I had no idea. That's what they want you to believe. Or another way that uh, narcissists can smear you is they can demonize those who support you. Uh, so let's suppose that there's uh, some sort of a split between you and that narcissist. And so the narcissist is going to say to whoever wants to hear, oh, her friends or his friends are the biggest phonies you have ever met. Or it, it may be that, you know, the, the people that they work with, they're just a bunch of liars and backstabbers. And so the narcissist is kind of going on the, you can tell a lot about a person by the company they keep. And so if they can smear the people that like you and you're hanging with, doesn't matter if it's true or not, uh, then that can just bring you down. And that's another one of their techniques. Or how about this one? This is a seventh one. And that is uh, the narcissist can appeal to their own personal positive characteristics. And so the narcissist may say, you have no idea how many times I have bent over backwards trying to keep this person happy. I, I've taken care of all the domestic chores. I've given them gifts. I've, I've uh, done all sorts of favors for people that they enjoy and they're attached to. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can be satisfied. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and and you find out that, uh, well, that's, that's taken way out of context and it's not accurate. You know, I, I've gone overboard doing this and doing that. And so they, they set themselves as being the magnanimous uh, exam, exemplar and you're just nothing but the ingrate. Now, when you look at this, uh, you realize the name of the game for narcissists is dominance and power. 
and they can uh, exhibit a lot of shallow thinking. They can be very uh, fluid, which is a nice, uh, with truth, which is a nice way to say they lie a lot and easily. They can be insincere. They can be undermining. They can be cagey. They can be devious. And so you might ask, well, how am I going to respond to this? Uh, do I need to just go out to my public and defend myself when I know that this kind of campaign is being taken against me? And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes you, you'll need to let people that know, especially people that you care most about, uh, let them know. I know that there are some things that are being spoken about me. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to talk with you about it. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I've been on the receiving end of uh, a public campaign that has not really put me in a good light. What would you like to know? And show yourself to be transparent. So yes, there are times when you need to do that and you need to explain. Uh, the, the key, though, is to do it without sounding too defensive. Well, let me tell you a few things about that other person. Because uh, if you go too far into that, then it just people feel like they're being caught in uh, an unnecessary uh, crossfire. And then another question people have is, well, should I go and confront the narcissist? And sometimes the answer there is also yes. Sometimes you can let that narcissistic person know, hey, I'm on to you. I know that you've been saying things about me and my character. Uh, as best as I can, as strongly as I can say it, I, I want to ask you, please stop. Uh, I don't want uh, this to happen anymore. And you can at least speak your truth. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop and, and rearrange everything, but there are times when that would be best. Ultimately, we're going to say that when a narcissist makes it his or her job to run you into the ground, your best argument is a life well lived. And I know that can sound... Um, like the correct answer. Uh, and then you kind of think, well, but not everybody understands. And and I guess I have the response here that says, if, if other individuals are going to believe that narcissistic person's spin on pretty much everything, then it may be that that's uh, those people that believe the narcissist don't really know uh, a whole lot about narcissism and that narcissist very well, which means they're not very deep thinkers. And it also means that they may not have the depth and the wisdom to realize that there are always two sides to every story and they're not willing to go there. And, and then the question is, do you really need to have their approval? So let's go with the notion that says, uh, when you need to stand up for yourself and uh, uh, speak words on your behalf, but in the meantime, your best argument is to be a person of good character. These people can be so exasperating, but I'm hoping that you can decide, I'm going to live inside DRC. Dr. C stands for DRC, Dignity, Respect, and Civility. And over time, if people are inclined to want to really know you, then those kind of characteristics are going to be your best argument. Watch how I live my life and then draw your conclusions accordingly. I know that uh, uh, the, the, uh, many of you are struggling with issues like this, and if you uh, have the need to, I'd like for you to subscribe so that we can uh, pass more videos to you and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, give you more words of encouragement about how to understand this. So hit that subscribe button. If you have a need for counseling, and many of you I know have that desire, I would encourage you to seek out someone in your area, or if that's uh, not uh, the, uh, a possibility, we have a link below uh, with a, a group that we trust, a sponsor that has a, a whole team of licensed professional counselors that can help you. And so I would encourage you to go beneath and uh, hit that link and uh, get the help that you need. In addition, I put out uh, my webinars, my courses, and, and other kinds of uh, uh, initiatives and resources. We have that beneath you, free to be. And then we also have an, a new one coming up called This Is Me about setting boundaries. That's going to that's be coming up very shortly. Uh, and then in addition, we have links to books, etc. I know that nobody likes to be on the receiving end of a smear campaign and people trying to turn uh, others against you, uh, but I am hoping that you can remain committed to being a person of character, and in doing so, let your steadiness and let your goodness be your greatest argument. And in doing so, you get to put your head down on the pillow at night as a person of peace. I so want that for you.